When the narcissist feels suffering, this is what they do. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to discuss a topic that many of you may find relevant, especially if you have been involved in a long-term relationship with a narcissist. As you may know, such relationships often lead to significant strain and tension. It is essential to understand this dynamic and how it affects both parties involved. Now, let's take a moment to consider an important question. Do narcissists ever show signs of their own suffering? Do they experience feelings of regret, emotional pain, or confusion regarding their interactions with others? The answer is a resounding yes. In fact, narcissists often experience a considerable amount of misery. However, how they express this suffering is crucial to understanding their behavior. When they face conflicts or emotional distress, it typically manifests as anger. This reaction is not surprising, as it often becomes evident where their feelings are coming from. When narcissists reach a point where they feel that life is not going well for them, they often resort to specific coping mechanisms. What strategies do they use to manage the internal strain and tension they experience? First and foremost, it is important to note that narcissists do not tend to engage in deep self-reflection about their feelings or behaviors. Instead, they often operate on autopilot, relying on familiar habits that they have used in the past. These coping strategies are not particularly effective, yet narcissists continue to employ them. It is almost as if they are stuck in a cycle of trying the same techniques repeatedly, even if they have failed numerous times before. For example, they might think, I have attempted this approach 100 times, but maybe this 101st attempt will yield different results. This lack of effective reasoning or insight into their behavior often prevents them from finding healthier ways to cope with their emotions. In my experiences working with individuals, one of the first questions I pose is about responsibility, who is responsible for what? This inquiry is particularly relevant when dealing with a narcissist. It often becomes clear that they struggle significantly with acknowledging their own responsibilities in various situations. This difficulty can lead to further complications in relationships, as the narcissist may deflect blame or refuse to recognize the impact of their actions on others. Let me take you through a variety of strategies that narcissists often use as coping mechanisms when they are feeling miserable. As we explore these strategies, you might want to take note of which ones resonate with your experiences. This will help you understand the complexities of dealing with narcissists and the challenges that arise in such interactions. One of the most common strategies that narcissists employ is shifting blame onto others. This should come as no surprise. When they encounter difficulties or feel unhappy, they quickly look for someone or something to hold responsible. For instance, they might say, if you hadn't done this, or if my situation were different, or if I had more financial resources, or even if you were less argumentative. Essentially, they create a narrative that absolves them of any accountability, placing the burden of their feelings on external factors or people. Sometimes, narcissists delve into their past and become historical, referencing events from their upbringing or previous interactions. They might state, well, I know things are tough now, but much of this stems from my family or from things you did in the past that have always bothered me. In this way, they attempt to justify their current feelings of misery by connecting them to past grievances. Regardless of the specifics, their primary focus remains on identifying someone else to blame, often refusing to consider their own role in the situation. Another significant coping mechanism that narcissists use is exerting pressure on those around them to change. You may hear phrases like, you should have done this, you ought to change, or why did you make that choice? This pressure serves to place the responsibility of their happiness squarely on your shoulders. They convey a sense of urgency, implying that your actions are the key to alleviating their misery. This manipulation can be overwhelming, as they demand that you adapt your behavior to meet their needs. Furthermore, when narcissists are experiencing their own suffering, they often express this through rage. They seem to believe that if they can display enough anger and strong dissatisfaction, it will compel you to change your behavior. Their thinking is flawed, as they hope that by making their misery known through intense emotions, you will feel guilty and rush to apologize or alter your actions to make them feel better. This approach can be emotionally exhausting for those on the receiving end, 
as they navigate the unpredictable nature of the narcissist's reactions. If the overt displays of anger are not present, narcissists may resort to a more passive-aggressive approach. This involves sulking, withholding affection, or expressing contempt in subtle ways. Their goal remains the same, to manipulate your emotions and prompt you to change your behavior in response to their discontent. This passive-aggressive behavior can be particularly bewildering, as it creates an environment where you may feel like you are walking on eggshells, constantly trying to avoid triggering their anger. At times, in their attempts to alleviate their feelings of misery, narcissists engage in what can be described as high rationalization. This means they try to come up with various justifications for their behavior and circumstances. For example, they might say, this situation would never have occurred if it weren't for this specific issue, or you need to understand that the context of my statements was completely different. In doing so, they enter a cycle of reasoning that often leads them further away from taking responsibility for their actions. This rationalization serves as a way for them to suit their discomfort without facing the reality of their situation. Another common strategy that narcissists employ is seeking out a complaint buddy. This is someone they can confide in, often a friend or acquaintance, with whom they can share their grievances. During a phone call or a lunch meeting, they might express their frustrations, saying things like, let me tell you about the misery I am currently experiencing. The friend, often nodding in agreement, provides the affirmation the narcissist seeks. Afterward, they might feel a sense of relief, believing that their complaints have been validated by another person. This reinforces their feelings of being wronged and allows them to return to their lives feeling somewhat better, at least temporarily. There are also instances where a narcissist may express a form of confession, particularly when their role in a problem is so obvious that they cannot deny it. They might say, okay, I admit that I shouldn't have said it that way, or I realize that I made a mistake. However, this admission is often superficial. The underlying thought process is typically, now that I have acknowledged this, can we move on? They do not engage in deeper reflection or genuine remorse. Instead, they want to quickly dismiss the issue once it has been acknowledged. In some cases, narcissists may seek counseling. While it is true that many narcissists avoid therapy, there are instances where they do decide to attend sessions. However, their approach in therapy often mirrors their usual complaint mindset. They might come into the session and say, let me explain why my life is so problematic, placing the blame on external factors and other people. During these sessions, they may try to enlist the therapist as an ally, stating things like, even Dr. So-and-so agrees with me. This strategy allows them to feel validated and supported in their perspective, rather than encouraging meaningful self-reflection or personal growth. Additionally, narcissists often resort to self-soothing techniques to cope with their feelings of misery. These methods can include indulgent behaviors such as consuming alcohol, using recreational drugs, overeating, or engaging in retail therapy. They might immerse themselves in activities that provide immediate pleasure or distraction such as playing video games for extended periods, exercising excessively, binge-watching television shows, or going for motorcycle rides. These self-indulgent behaviors serve as temporary escapes from their emotional pain, allowing them to avoid confronting their feelings or the underlying issues that contribute to their suffering. At times, narcissists may respond to their feelings of misery by withdrawing from those around them. This withdrawal can manifest as avoidance behavior where they become distant and uncommunicative. They might sulk or express their frustration through passive-aggressive actions. The predominant emotion they often exhibit during these times is anger. In some cases, this anger can lead to rebellious behavior. For instance, when I have spoken with narcissistic individuals who have engaged in extramarital affairs, they often justify their actions by saying, this would never have happened if my spouse had handled things differently. Such statements reflect their tendency to externalize blame rather than taking responsibility for their choices. Additionally, narcissists may engage in acts of rebellion that can include partying excessively or openly defying those around them. This defiance can also appear as a refusal to cooperate or collaborate with others. In other instances, they may immerse themselves in work, using it as a way to escape their feelings. They might say things like, just leave me alone, I need to focus on my projects. 
This retreat into work allows them to avoid confronting their emotions and the underlying issues causing their distress. However, what is notably absent from all these behaviors is a deeper introspection into their own character. This is the conundrum I mentioned earlier. When narcissists are experiencing their own misery, they seldom take the time to examine their internal selves. They do not ask critical questions such as, what aspects of my character do I need to address, or who am I really? They fail to explore the meaning behind their emotions, their anger, and their disruptive behaviors. Instead of looking inward, they often focus on blaming external factors or people for their problems. One of the most significant questions I pose when working with individuals is, how can we help people develop a better understanding of their essence? Essence refers to the core of who you are, the true nature of your identity. It encompasses questions like, what does it truly mean to be me? And what is my authentic self? For narcissists, if they genuinely wish to adopt healthier coping mechanisms, they must recognize that their narcissism is fundamentally an issue of essence. They cannot successfully align their external circumstances until they effectively manage their internal selves. This is where their coping mechanisms often fail. To heal and overcome their misery, narcissists need to engage in self-reflection and ask themselves essential questions. For example, they could consider, what does it mean for me to embrace qualities that are not rooted in narcissism? How can I become a more unselfish person? They might also reflect on the importance of self-restraint in their interactions with others. They may think, I do not enjoy being controlled, how can I change my controlling behavior towards others? Furthermore, they might explore what it truly means to lean into love and connection with others, rather than seeking admiration or adoration. Understanding love goes beyond simply wanting to be admired, it involves recognizing their own flaws and accepting that everyone has imperfections. They might ask themselves, what would mutual acceptance look like in my relationships? How can I create a safe environment where both myself and others can acknowledge our flaws and support each other in growth? Unfortunately, these are not thoughts that narcissists typically engage in. Their inability to consider these deeper questions keeps them trapped in their patterns of behavior and prevents them from experiencing genuine emotional growth. A key realization for many is that forcing others to change for one's own benefit is not a productive approach. Instead, what if one were to become a model for change by starting with themselves? This shift in perspective can be transformative. It leads to questions like, what does it mean for me to grow and learn? How can I foster accountability in my relationships with others over the long term? By placing oneself in a position to embrace personal development, individuals can open the door to genuine change. A narcissist might initially respond positively to this idea, saying, that actually sounds appealing, and may even express a willingness to engage in personal growth. However, the challenge arises when they do not achieve the desired results from their external environment. In such cases, they often give up on the process entirely. For narcissists, the notion of addressing their internal struggles is profoundly counterintuitive. If they were to hear suggestions about examining their essence and making changes on that level, most would likely dismiss it. They might think, no, that's for those whom I consider weak. I prefer to focus on making others change instead. Consequently, they revert to ineffective strategies that do not lead to real solutions. This tendency to avoid introspection perpetuates their inner turmoil. Narcissists frequently return to familiar coping mechanisms that guarantee failure, reinforcing their negative patterns. This is why it is often said that understanding what you are dealing with is crucial. It is important to adjust your expectations accordingly and to understand your relationship with them. Recognizing that a narcissist is unlikely to engage in true personal growth can help you navigate the complexities of these interactions. While narcissists do experience pain and misery, they often turn to ineffective coping skills as a way to manage their discomfort. They may acknowledge their struggles, but continue to rely on strategies that yield no real progress. It is vital for individuals, especially those affected by narcissistic behavior, to take a different approach. By committing to self-examination and focusing on their essence, they can begin to make meaningful changes in their lives. This inward focus will ultimately influence how they present themselves to the world.
I encourage you to dedicate yourself to a lifelong journey of personal growth and self-improvement. By doing so, you may find the strength to separate from the toxic behaviors of narcissists and discover your own sense of peace. Your path to healing and fulfillment begins with you, and I hope you embrace this journey wholeheartedly. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and share your thoughts below. Your engagement helps us reach more people who may benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and support on your journey. Thank you for being here today.